Welcome to Brooklyn Center High School for a non-conference girls matchup tonight. It is the Rockford Rockets paying a visit here to take on the Centaurs. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Patty Sorensen, longtime coach at Park Center. And very early in the season, but both teams off to pretty solid starts. Brooklyn Center is a second year back with a full varsity program. They're going to be a little shorthanded tonight, but decent start for them and they had a, a, actually a pretty good breakout year for them last year too. Yeah I think both teams have gotten off to some success this year so they've had success that way. Um, I think like you said early in the season so it's going to be interesting to see how things go. It's great to see Brooklyn Center getting back up there and getting their varsity program going again. I think that's a huge thing to see it come and develop. Marty Johnson the Rockford coach said he's uh, actually kind of pleasantly surprised that his team has started as well as they have. They've uh, played a couple of pretty good opponents, a couple games they won a little bit easier, but uh, he said, you know, they're, they're in a very tough Wright County conference, but he's, you know, kind of cautiously optimistic about this Rockets group. Yeah, I think he is. You know, he talked about how strong that conference is over there and how strong they were last year. There's like five in the top 20 of the eight teams. This team, he says, is maybe a little smaller than what he's had, and I think he's looking for, you know, some people are starting to show up and break out, but I think he's looking for that, that one, and he might feel a little, like he says, not as big as he'd like to be. Centaurs did win their first two games this season. They won 16 a year ago. They lost to Christ Household of Faith on Tuesday night. But uh, again, Coach uh, Reese was saying for their team, not going to quite be able to play the same style tonight because they've got some players right now out of the lineup. It, it kind of limits a little bit what they can do in terms of, you know, really pressing and running the ball a lot. Exactly. I think Coach Reese is, like he said, he's working on some new things. Unfortunately, not enough time to develop and input some of the new things he wants to do. But it is. It's going to be fun to see how he creates and, and how his players respond. Both teams said they don't know a lot about the other. They did play a year ago. Rockford won that one pretty handily. The Centaur is trying to keep it closer this year around and maybe pull off an upset. It's the Rockets from Rockford taking on the Centaurs from Brooklyn Center, and it comes your way next here on CCX. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? or when people know your name. Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Yeah. Did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> First time I tried Vicodin, and it was laying around my mom's house. And then I kept taking them whenever I could get them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. 
Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And welcome back here to Brooklyn Center as the starting lineups being introduced uh, to tonight's crowd. These teams are in the same section, which is a, a reason that, you know, this is a matchup that you kind of like to put on your schedule, see some teams that you could potentially see in the postseason. Obviously, these teams, uh, you know, a ways apart and not many common opponents, but when it is a section team, those are the kind of games you try to schedule. I think so, too. It's, it's nice to get a look, even if it's a good look or an early look, but it's nice to get a, a look at them. Starting lineups we'll take a look at here. First of all, for the visiting Rockford Rockets, Marty Johnson is their head coach. Sidney Montana, Eva Cuschiata, Neely Griffin is their point guard, Sarah Byers and Skylar Palmer. As they've got a fairly young group as a couple of sophomores and a freshman in their starting lineup and two seniors as well. And for Mario Reese and the Centaurs, again, they've got some players uh, out that normally would be in their lineup. So. Nellie Williams, Rachel Solante, Shamaya Hudson, Malia Confair, and Javiana Lynch. The starting group for BC. Hudson had a nice game last time out, and uh, coach is saying she'll probably be getting a fair number of looks here this evening if things go according to plan. You know, I think for coaches, it makes them a little bit nervous to not know the opponent that well, but I don't think players really think of it quite the same way. I think they just want to go out and play, and, and maybe if there's some surprises, that's okay too. I agree. I think kids just, it's right now, especially this early on, let's just go. We want to get out and play. Uh, a lot of times now with the way these kids play so much ball in the offseason, a lot of them know each other sometimes too from their travel AAU teams. Rockets control the tip, a pass tip, but they'll get it back. Palmer dishing over, and a long jumper won't drop there for Griffin. And then a foul on the putback try inside as Cuschiata took it up inside. So free throws coming here for Ava, the 5'8 freshman. First one is good and Rockford on the scoreboard first. And second one also good. So Cassiata able to put a couple of them away. Rockford coming with some pressure and they get the quick steal there by Griffin. Around for an open baseline look. It spins in and out though for Palmer. And we will get a foul call here. Going against Rockford as uh, Griffin called for the reach in after the rebound grab there by Confair. Coach Reese was saying, you know, we'd like to get the ball past their pressure and then get in and slow the game down a little bit in the front court. But he said, well, whether that actually happens, we'll see. Yeah, I know he was a little concerned about that to start with. And and then they did exactly what he thought. They came out with the pressure. Now it's going to be seeing how this group of young ladies can trying to, like I said, get the ball across half court, see if they can get into some of the systems he'd like to have them run. Lynch inbounding here for Brooklyn Center. Quick shot there is put up short and rebounded by Byers. Byers will bring it up court here for the Rockets. Brooklyn Center is trying to run a pretty aggressive one, two, two right now. Hopefully that can. Pass dumped inside, Palmer got it out. Montana taking the shot and a travel first. And that's what uh, Coach Johnson was you know, eager to see how his team would react if they're playing a team that's a little bit quick, maybe a little bit up in your face. And, and uh, he said it might, you know, might be good for our girls. Well, I think he's hoping to see some different looks, especially early in the season, see, what, see how they're going to react to some of the different looks they're seeing from some of these teams. Slane kicks it back out here to Hudson. She's going to let it rip from long distance, and that one is short. And will bounce out of bounds, and Rockford will have it. So 
Yeah, once, that was a once big you, one. Yeah, when you get in rhythm, that one might be a little more palatable for a coach, but uh, that was pretty deep for this early in the game especially. Quick passing around the horn here, and that one is way off target for Griffin. So Rockford kind of guilty of the same thing as Brooklyn Center. They're maybe forcing one up quicker than needed. They're going to apply their pressure now. They, they got a turnover the last time, but they weren't able to capitalize on it. And this is going to be called a jump ball. It will be Brooklyn Center possession, and Coach Reese looks like he's going to have to use a timeout already just a uh, minute 23 into the contest here as I think not seeing what he wanted probably on the press break first and foremost here as they're getting a little bunched up and not really getting some nice cuts to, to get open for a pass. Yeah, I think right now he's, he's, he's redirecting and talking about how they need to break this press first of all. And then the next phase he's going to want to talk about, okay, now when we get across, let's set up. Let's get into our system. Uh, I think, that, like you said, that last shot came a little too soon, a little deep. Uh, let's try and work the ball a little more and get our better shot. Marty Johnson, kind of an interesting uh, situation where he's in his second year back as head coach for the Rockets. He had taken him five years off to, to coach his uh, kids, youth, and then uh, before that he'd been the head coach previously for 10 years, so it you know, worked out nice for him, obviously, that the, the availability was there to do that again. Off the inbounds pass, Williams trying to get control, goes to the hoop with it, and too strong. Tipped out of bounds, last touch, I believe, by Rockford here, so it'll be Centaur's basketball. Lynch will inbound. And that one's stolen away as Griffin read it well and picked it off. You know, Coach Reese said he was going to come out and start in this 1-2-2, two, two, and, he, you know, he's not afraid to throw different things if he needs to throw out some different defenses to adjust, so it'll be interesting to see what they go through and what they if they change some things up from time to time and how quickly they do. Montana missed the shot. Rebound was grabbed by Cassiata and then she was fouled. Believe the foul went against Confair. We're not going to be able to do true great a job on fouls tonight and they're not putting them up on the scoreboard and you can't always see the officials uh, signal there. So Cassiata hits the free throw. She is Scored all three of the points here for the Rockets as they bring in a sub now as Bryn London coming in. London, a good track athlete, according to Coach Johnson, who had, uh, had a year or two off of basketball, now coming back out as a senior. Second free throw also good, so Ava Cassiata off to a good start at the line. It's 4-0 Rockets. Hudson driving it and loses it. It'll be Rockford ball. They had a good up, they broke the press nicely. They had a good player advantage. It just lost the ball and weren't able to finish. Down to the baseline, London's jumper won't drop. We're gonna get an over the back foul called here against Cassiata of Rockford. So they will pick up their second team foul first on Ava. She definitely, there's a, Rockford definitely has a height advantage. And they turn it over there as the Cassiata with the interception after the dribbler fell. Shot fake and then put up and off the glass and good. I don't know that Griffin called bank there, but it'll count for three. I think part of the problem right now is uh, Brooklyn Center tries to break this press. They make some good passes, but then they, then they put the ball down and, and they're dribbling into it and they're getting it turned over. Yeah, she stepped out of bounds on that one. It got deflected and she went to grab it, but she was out of bounds. So it'll be Rockford basketball turnovers plaguing the Centaurs in the early going here. Montana inbounding. She's going to look up the sideline. Palmer getting it back out. Montana looking down low. Palmer, a nice dish and great passing there. And Cassiata gets her first field goal after those four free throws, and it's quickly 9 0 Rockford. Rockford did a nice job of moving the ball around. Get it up the sideline and over to Confair and then back out top here. Williams, or Hudson rather, driving it. Her shot partially blocked. And then we'll get a foul call as a little trip on the way out. And this will go against Hudson. Second team foul on Brooklyn Center. 
going to see a substitution here for the Centaurs. As Ashana Minter will come in. So Rockford ball in the backcourt here. They lead it nine to nothing in the early going. And there's a takeaway there, a nice read by Minter who just came in, but then they turn it back over and then Montana was fouled. And that one is going to go against Confer, which I believe is her second. See, that's one of the things that Coach had talked about for for uh, the Centaurs is, you know, he wanted them to slow down a little bit and they're starting to break the press, but unfortunately they're going too fast and that's causing some of their turnovers. And left short on the shot there by Cassiata. And the Centaurs out of there with it and here's an opportunity. Lay up high off the window and just wouldn't drop as Solane took the shot and then a steal but it's going to be off the foot of Brooklyn Center's Hudson. Rockets make a substitution here as uh, Byers comes back into their lineup. Coach Reese instructing Israel, get your hands up there as a three pointer is good, Ellie Sather just came off the bench for Rockford, knocks it down, it's 12-0 Rockets. Solane losing it, the tie-up will go to Rockford on the alternating possession. Well, you touched on it a little bit earlier too, Patty, it makes it a little bit tougher, you know, when you're facing the zone when pretty much across the board, Rockford's taller too, so you can't really throw the ball over them too easily either. Well, exactly, I mean, you've got You've got Williams trying to defend a uh, gal that is, you know, 5'8", looks a little taller than that, and Williams, and she's five feet, that's a good stretch for her, so that's a tough thing, and she's trying to guard her, but that's a tough matchup. Ellie Sather, an offensive rebound, and she was fouled, so she'll go to the free throw line. Sather who came off the bench and scored a moment ago, averages a little bit under five points per game nearly going this season. It's a young group really for, for both of these teams that see quite a few ninth and 10th graders in the lineup, which you know isn't terribly unusual, especially in a little bit smaller schools, but if you can play, you can play, whatever age. Well, and, and Rockford has a few players that are young, but they've played in their program and on their varsity level, you know, since eighth graders. So that they've developed up through that. That's, that's a nice thing to have, the consistency in that, and having kids continue to develop. And that's going to be a reach-in foul on Montana there as she went for the steal on that pass. So third foul on the Rockets. BC has committed five. Into a double team here, ball on the floor and a big battle for it. We will get hmm, a traveling call going against Brooklyn Center as Hudson actually almost kind of got penalized for winning the race to that ball and then she tried to roll over with it. Thought we might see a tie up, but again, that, that might be the right call. She did have control of it first, it looked like. Kick it back out and they'll restart their offense there, Rockets. Montana hasn't had a shot attempt yet. Their leading scorer missed that one. Put back try wouldn't drop. One more opportunity and powered up and in by Skylar Palmer for her first basket. You know, the Centaurs are trying to focus on the bigs in the middle right now, which is opening some of those nice shots outside. If uh, Rockford starts putting them down, it's going to be something else. There's Minther for the layup. Brooklyn Center's first points of the night, 14 to 2. Montana, shot fake and comes to the middle. Have some openings on that side, but that one is way off target from Sather. 
And here come the Centaurs now with Solane. And that one just rolling off. Confair grabs the rebound. Back out. Hudson will let it fly for three. It's in and out. And Confair, good hustle to get it back. Long attempt wouldn't fall there for Solane. Now a ball on the ground. Ball still alive. Now we get the tie-up call. It will stay with Brooklyn Center. Pull it back out top here. Solani trying to get it started. One you can see is the Centaur players are just trying to get used to playing together, you know, with some of the different adjustments in their lineups. And it's getting used to playing together and, and reacting. So you can see some of that struggle right now. But Minter with an offensive rebound and gets her second bucket of the night. So 14-4 and then a turnover force. Here come the Centaurs again now. Solani had it knocked away. Another look at the uh, offensive rebound here. Lynch coming back in for the Centaur. She will inbound here. Confair turns and fires. That one's off target. Rockford looking to push it, but it's going to be intercepted. Hudson wheels back out of there. And that one a little bit short from Williams and now Rockford looking to push the pace again but they'll hold it up. Griffin giving it to the baseline and a near steal. Let's see what we have, oh, is this a foul call looks like? She landed on that elbow really hard when she went down. Looks like she's okay though. Call is going to go against Rockford on the bump right there by Byers. So BC ball, that pass though stolen away off the inbound. Nice rotation around, wow. Montana missing but then put back by Palmer. I think Montana was so surprised she was so open that she just rushed that one. Hudson attacking for the Centaurs, layup's good. So Brooklyn Center starting to get it going a little bit here. They're still down 10, and they started slow, but picking up the pace a little bit offensively here. And, and this one out of bounds. It'll be Brooklyn Center basketball. You know, as they're starting, as the Centaurs are starting to pick up their pace, it's, it's now making Rockford make some rush decisions and passes. And that's exactly what happened right down there. Now, with as rugged of a start they had, I mean, they're down, you know, down 10. They're... There's still a lot of ball game to go. They certainly have the capability to get back into this one. Nice Minter, pass. Minter, oh, had it blocked. Good break there, but a good reaction defensively too as uh, London got the block. And a three is up and good for Griffin. Nice return pass there. Montana just one touched it right back to her. You catch the defense sliding one way and then they couldn't recover and it allowed for a pretty open look. Timeout taken here, 19 to six Rockford lead. You know, Rockford took that timeout and I, I think, you know, if I'm him, I'm sitting down talking about, okay, the tempo's picking up, but we still gotta do what we're supposed to do. Uh, we gotta settle down, we gotta continue to make clean passes because when they're doing that and moving, they're getting open shots like that. Last couple times down though, there was some rushed uh, passes and turned over, but you gotta give, Brooklyn Center, a lot of credit. They are playing scrappy. They're in there. They're going at every loose ball, and they, they, they're working hard. And, the, you know, as tough of a shooting start as they've had, to see a few of those go in, whether it be an offensive putback or even just a shot, you know, on the break like uh, like Hudson had a moment ago, you know, it kind of boosts your confidence a little bit. I think that I don't think it's a stretch to say that they're forcing up some longer shots than they really need to or should be but um, you know you get you get a variety of ways of scoring whether it be transition or just uh, hard work on the glass and that that can kind of carry over to the rest of your shots too yeah I think that's helping him I mean they've seen su success in breaking the press a little bit right now getting the ball up the head and they've been able to capitalize on a couple layups and if they continue to do that because they have that speed advantage 
And right now they've pulled the press off, so we're going to get to see what they do in their half court sets. Williams backing it out of there, looking to see what they can do against this Rockford defense. Oh, we're going to be an offensive foul called there on Williams. Yeah, she kind of, she made the attack to the basket, but they're calling that a lot this year. They're looking more at the offensive player, kind of pushing off, and, and she did. The elbow comes out. Pass tipped away there, and I think she, a less lenient official might have thought about teeing her up there. She slammed the ball down yeah. pretty hard, too. Yep, she was pretty frustrated. Montana will inbound here for Rockford. They give it right back to Sydney here. Edge of the lane, that's gonna be an offensive foul call. You kind of figured that when you saw that at the other end that they were probably gonna get uh, Cassiata for that one too. It seems to happen that at mid times. You know, you, you see one go on one side and then it happens, follows up right on the second side. What Coach Reese is trying to get his kids to do is pass that ball and cut a little more. Um, they gotta start moving it. Nice dish out to Williams, no good, but a foul. This might be three free throws coming up. Yeah, it will be. As charging out a little too hard at the shooter there is Griffin will pick up that foul. And so that means three free throws upcoming here for Williams. First one short of the mark. And one more coming. I don't know if they could just capitalize at this free throw line that's given them some opportunities. And We have a lane violation on the Centaurs, so they will not get that third attempt. Sam Aaron's in there for Rockford, stepped in two, but it was after the player next to her looked like, so shot or lane violation on Brooklyn Center. And Rockford just got even taller with her coming in. She's a six foot tall player. And they try to go to Aaron's right here, but they're not able to make the connection at close quarters. And just in for Brooklyn Center. Major Foley there forgot to give it to the official first. She was just going to pass it in and go. Hudson with it out on the wing here. Slipped away from Minter. She hustles after it and gets it and oh. starts the dribble while she's on the ground. And then turns it over though, taken by Palmer. Palmer throwing it across. Byers spinning out of there with it. Montana shooting it up there, won't go. And that's going to be a travel call as falling to the floor with the ball was Palmer. She worked hard to get it, but couldn't keep her balance. So Brooklyn Center basketball trailing at 19 to 6. And Coach Reese is going to use a timeout here. I think right now he's he's needs to talk to his kids a little bit. They're looking at, you know, he's, they're trying to run their five out, but right now the Rockford's sitting in a little bit of a zone. They're sitting up there with a 3-2 like zone up high that, and, and he's just got to get more movement out of the kids away from the ball too and off the ball and, and harder cuts. Yeah, the good news is for them right now is that Rockford, you know, has pulled back on the pressure, so they're not turning it over as much. But now it's the next thing is try to, you know, trying to figure out how to attack against that zone a little bit and get them out of position. Obviously, they've dribbled a little more than what would be ideal out on the perimeter, I think, for BC. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, get a shot. We've got to get a movement where we can maybe get inside, get out, have them collapse on us, and then we can kick it out, and then let's see if we've got something. I think they're the kind of team, though, that they really like to drive and attack the bucket and score off of those kind of opportunities also. Solane dishes to the corner. Confair shot off the side of the backboard, but they'll get it back. And Hudson fading backward misses badly there on that one. It'll be Rockford ball. Confort works hard out there. She's a scrappy little player. If, if you look at the ground, and, and most of the time she's involved in one of those plays, and going after a loose ball, getting a steal. And that one stripped away just as uh, London was going to try and go up for a shot, but then the Rockets get it right back as the deflection by Byers goes over to Montana. Byers driving, and then pass gets away from Palmer and out of bounds. It'll be Brooklyn center ball. Coach Johnson said, you know, right now we're a better defensive team than offensive team, and they've struggled a little bit to really get the kind of shots that they want to also, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think they've, they've got some good sets there that they want to do, but I, I think it's the patience and just trusting each other in the flow of their offense and not trying to rush the pass in there or squeeze it in. In traffic, no good, and Minter is fouled as she tried to go back up with that one. She's done a nice job since coming in. That was a good decision on hers. I mean, I don't really know if she really had the good angle for a shot, but drew the foul and put her at the free throw line. Free throw bounces around and out. And that one too hard off the backboard. That really kind of looked intentional, <laughs> didn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. They were trying to get an offensive rebound. A little interesting strategy in this situation, but obviously it needs to hit the rim, not just the backboard. Montana throwing it away. She was looking for a cut there, but you really have to be sure that your player's actually cutting and say there wasn't. They're, they're kind of struggling right now, too, just to get into the flow of their offense. A lot of forced passes that have caused turnovers, or like you said, the person didn't cut where they thought they were going. Confair short with that one. Nice save, though, over to Minter. Yeah, it was good hustle by Williams chasing that one down, and Minter will go back to the free throw line. I think Rockford kind of just had in their mind that that ball was going out of bounds. Williams was the only one who kept going really hard after it, and she saved it in. That's what I like about, you know, with the Centaurs. They do. They, they don't give up on any play. Minter's free throw too hard. Second one, no good as well. Rebound grab by Sather. So we stay at 19 to six. Rockford trying to get into their offense quick. And nice tip away by Williams though, and it leads to a steal for Solani. Back out to Confair. That one is too strong. And the Rockets able to get out of there with it. Back out to Griffin. They dump it inside, turn around, it is up and good. Nice looking shot by Cassiato there for her second field goal, has eight points. You know, Rockford's looking to get the ball into the middle like that. The possession before this one that, that they didn't score on, one more pass and she would have been open. I think they were trying to get it a little too soon, but they keep moving the ball, she's going to be wide open. Solane the drive and draws the foul, so she'll head to the free throw line here. Looks like the call will go against Sather. And looks like they're calling the foul. 
on the floor. So one and one before the shot. So you need to make the first one to get another one. And it's short. Jumper put up there, won't go. Battle for it. And we'll get another tie up here. It'll be Rockford basketball. Trying to get themselves set up in a little stack. And then they go right back inside. Follow up try won't go for Aaron's. And it looks like it'll stay with Rockford here. Quick inbound. Thompson is open and missed it. And again, Rockford will keep possession here. Get the pass out of there and back up top. They'll swing it around. Open look, but won't drop. And then we'll get a tie up. It'll go to Brooklyn Center. She, she was lucky on that one because her first grab of that ball was right over, <laughs> right over the Brooklyn Center girl's head. She was able to change her grip a bit and became a tie up instead of a foul. Solani down the baseline and, and throws it up. Williams briefly had it now the Rockets looking to push it back the other way. Sather goes all the way and is fouled and will head to the free throw line. Hudson tried to track her down and make a play on that one and did force a miss but committed the foul so Sather to the line. Too hard with that one. She's had her struggles at the line, 0 for 3. And no good on the second one as well. Confair the rebound. And had it knocked loose though from behind by Sather. Montana getting the pass over to Griffin. Now Montana the shot no good. Strong rebound wouldn't go and we'll get a foul on Brooklyn Center as Sather going hard to the glass and she'll head back to the free throw line. I believe that was on Hudson which I have that for three again. Not really sure on some of these. They're not announcing the fouls. They're not putting them on the scoreboard. So and Unless we get a good look at the officials, referee's fingers, we're not going to know always. Free throw, no good. And then slapped away from Williams on her way to the bucket. It'll stay with Brooklyn Center. Palmer coming back into the Rockford lineup. Aaron's will check out. Hudson driving into traffic, no good. Gets a rebound. Yeah, nice follow up there. Pass was blocked. And Rockford will come out of there with it as Sather. And they'll bring it out top to Montana. Quick rotation here underneath, and the layup is good by Cassiata. Rockford coach is probably thinking like, no, that's more like it. That's what we want to see. <laughs> that was good ball movement. And then got it right into the middle where he wanted to hit it. <laughs> Drive here by Williams. No, but she was fouled and will head to the free throw line. Looked like a kind of a painful fall there a little bit. We've had a pretty foul filled game here so far as this one will go against Palmer, it looks like. That time, Brooklyn Center did take a little more time as they were moving the ball, and, and they actually got a better look. If they, like Coach Reese said, if he could get them just to slow down on offense a little bit too, I think they'd have a few more opportunities that would go their way. 
Well, both teams leaving some points left uh, at the line. Brooklyn center now 0 for 8 on free throws. And Rockford only marginally better. They're about 4 for 9. Second one no good. Four forty to go in the first half. Twenty-three to six. Rockford leading it here at Brooklyn Center. They work it around again, and another one. Boy, Cassiata's made a living in that spot. Well, yeah, that's perfect. She's coming up. She cut through the baseline. They pass it down low, and they pass it right. She came right from the top down, right where she wants. Easy shot right in the middle for her. They got the defense shifting, and it's leaving her wide open. She also has a good height advantage too. That's going to help her. Good look there from Solani, but it wouldn't drop. We get a jump ball. It will be Rockford possession. Lynch coming back into the lineup there for Brooklyn Center. Minter as well. She thought about that. Montana the miss. Lynch the rebound. Hudson working it up the left side, goes all the way in, but missed the layup attempt there, and then we'll get a foul call as Palmer tried to make the outlet pass. This has been a game of at the free throw line, but like you said, neither team is really capitalizing that well on those opportunities. That's what gets coaches to pull their hair out. You get these free shots at the line, and we're not, we're not making them go our way. Well, and I think it kind of, to a degree, makes the defense not, you know, not back off from fouling either because if you're not really making them pay, they, I mean, obviously, eventually it can add up in terms of personal fouls, but uh, you're not, not converting at the line doesn't really make them think twice about coming hard after things either for both teams. Exactly. Down low it goes and Confair nice. the layup. That was very nice. Came up the sideline, passed it over. Fourth field goal of the game for Brooklyn Center. That one spins in and out. Montana goes to get the offensive rebound and she'll head to the free throw line. That's obviously hurt Brooklyn Center. Not able to get blockouts, but they're just, again, giving up height at virtually every position. Nice drive and dish there by Solane and Confair. Right spot, you could see Coach Reese clapping in the background right there as they ran that one very nicely. You know, and she, she took her time on that shot also where so, some of their shots so far have been rather rushed and it's like, like you said earlier, down there for Rockford, they, I think she was surprised she was so wide open that some kids were rushing their shots now. Or let's hope they continue to settle and, and take their good shots. Montana one for two at the line, so that first free throw was her first point of the night. Comes in as their leading scorer at about 17 a game, but hasn't had a great start offensively. Here's a three, and it is good for Solani. First three-pointer of the night for the Centaurs. And they have battled back. Edge of the lane, the pass dumped out. Baseline jumper just wouldn't drop there for the Rockets Palmer, but they get another crack at it. No good with that. Rebound try, no good. Rebound on the other side, also not good. And the rebound grabbed there by Ania White in there for Brooklyn Center, but lost it. And that three ball won't drop. Little runner try there won't go for Griffin. And ultimately knocked out of bounds. It'll be Centaur's basketball. You know, if, if the Centaurs went down that when those shots come, if they, they really, even though there's a disadvantage with height, if they get a better blackout on it, they, they're going to give themselves a better opportunity for the rebound. Right now, Rockford's just pulling them down on them. I'd have to check at halftime. I believe the scoreboard has shorted Rockford a point. <laughs> Uh, on our screen, 26-11 is what my book has as well. Up on the, the big board here, it shows 25-11, unless one of those last shots. It hasn't really been a real recent three, though. No. Jumper no good. And a 
last time when Montana was at the line, they didn't put up a point on the free throw that she did make. And if nobody notices it right away, I don't think it'll get corrected. And a drive and up and in with that one for the Rockets is Byers with her first basket. Well, I think the, the book and the clock person, at least at halftime, would confer that they both match. Maybe the, it'll be interesting to see. You're going to get an illegal screen call there. And so it'll be Rockford ball in the backcourt. Kicked over to the baseline for an open look. That was pretty. And that'll be a two-pointer there for London, her first basket. Pass deflected, they get it back. Under a minute to play now in this first half. Ooh, travel there that was gotten away with. The jumper up no good. And rebounded by Palmer. Same spot, Cassiata knocking down another. She has five baskets and 14 points total now. They are doing a good job of seeing her in the middle, kicking it out to the outside. And then once the defense gets out on them, kicking it back inside. And she's open for that nice little shot. Did a travel call there going against White, and it will be Rockford ball with 23 seconds left in this first half. The other thing Rockford's doing really well, too, is once they collapse on the girl in the middle, she's kicking it, and you get a small one for the baseline. That they've had, they're getting some nice looks. Montana will take that three. It's too strong. Rebound grab there by Palmer. On to six. Asiata shooting it up no good. And then a foul. They battled for the rebound. It'll go against Lynch of Brooklyn Center. And it'll be two free throws with two seconds left here for Rockford. As Palmer going to the line. And that one spins out. Palmer averaging eight and a half rebounds a game, and we can see why in this first half. She just seems to have a, a nose for the ball in there. She definitely does a good job at that. Giving them opportunities, second opportunities. And that, that's the hard part with being a smaller team. If you can't get the block out, you're, you're not getting the second opportunities. Ooh. Wow, half court try nearly went at the buzzer there. So we have reached halftime in this one. Again, we'll do a little investigating here. Uh, we believe the score is 32-11 Rockford. The scoreboard here has a 31-11, but we'll get it sorted out. We'll come back with some first half highlights. And then our second half of basketball here. You're watching Girls Hoops on CCX Sports. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Leah, did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> I got some Oxy after I hurt my neck. First I took them to feel better. 
Then, I just kept taking them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Welcome back here to Brooklyn Center High School. The Centaurs trailing Rockford 32 to 11 at halftime here in this girls hoop match, uh, girls hoops matchup. As we take a look at some highlights from the first half, and Rockford kind of jumped on them right away and got off to a, a sizable lead to start things out here. As they get the bounce there on the three, Ellie say they're knocking that one down. Brooklyn Center took a while to score, but they did get a couple things going. Ashana Minter getting the layup there. Nice pass right back that time from Montana to Neely Griffin for one of the two threes that she made in the first half. And this was great rotation around. Oh, yeah, Cassiato's been the story of the night. The freshman has 14 already for Rockford. And then here's a high arcing three. Solane, that's the only three of the night for Brooklyn Center. Look at it again there from another angle. They drew the D and got the pass back out. See the scoring so far as Cassiata with 14 to lead the way. And uh, Brooklyn Center getting scoring from four different players, but uh, just not enough of it so far as they trail it 32 to 11. We will come back with more basketball here. Our second half coming up on CCX Sports. Early season action here between the Rockford Rockets and the Brooklyn Center Centaurs. Morris, the door flew open, and I got this larger than life personality talking at the top of his lungs. Hey, how you doing today? Oh man, oh, I totally forgot. Hold on, let me get this for you. Oh, just had a magnetic energy. So I thought, all right, we're definitely gonna be friends. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, let's do lunch. America, let's do lunch. Welcome back here to Brooklyn Center High School along with Patty Sorensen, I'm Jay Wilcox. The Centaur girls trailing Rockford 32 to 11 as we get set for our second half of basketball here tonight. And uh, obviously as the half went on, Patty, Brooklyn Center, you know, starting to get a few more looks. You know, what are some things they can maybe do to try and try and chip away a little bit? And, uh, you know, it's obviously a pretty big gap to close, but what, are, what do you see that they could maybe do to, to whittle it a little bit? I see if they, they're a little more patient on offense. You know, a little more passing and cutting like Coach wanted to do when he talked this before, you know. Get some more movement. Don't come down and just rush up a shot. Give yourself that. Because when you rush it up, especially in the type of offense he wants to run, you don't have anybody in there to rebound the ball. Plus, they're at a disadvantage in height that way. But if they just take their time and move the ball, they start to get some nice looks at the basket. And then they'd be able to capitalize. And they got to look at it one possession at a time right now. And Rockford, I think they did some things well. But I, I, I'm guessing they weren't you know, super happy with their offensive performance. I mean, 32 points isn't too bad, but they really missed a lot of shots, turned the ball over more than they would like also. I think it took them a long time to settle into their offensive scheme also. Once they did, we started seeing some passes inside and then an open on a baseline out or the outside was open and then they get a shot into the inside. So they started getting, I think, the looks they were looking for, but it did. It, it took a long time, I felt, for both teams to kind of settle down and get into a more relaxed offensive flow. And both teams starting out not great on the, uh, we had a badly missed shot for BC and then Rockford comes down court and throws a pass way over the intended target. Confair shooting this one from the baseline, it's good, it's a two. But able to knock one down, first basket of the half going for BC, it's 32-13. I think too, Coach probably talked to, Coach Reese probably talked to the kids about 
you know what, we're dribbling the ball a little too much. If we pass and move, and that last possession, that's what happened. Pass the ball, moved a little bit, and then they got a nice open shot. See if, did we have a foul here or a tie-up? That is going to be a foul call. As Lynch, or no, not Lynch, actually, it should have been, I believe it was Solani there. And there's a layup off the inbound for Palmer. So 34 13 lead for Brooklyn Center, or excuse me, for her Rockford. Shot on the run won't go there for Solani. And Williams jumping in the passing lane for the steal, but then couldn't quite keep it from going out of bounds, and it will be Rockford ball. Williams with good quick hands as they tried to go quickly down to the baseline there to Cassiata. She's kind of what I'd call a pesky little player. She's everywhere, her hands, and she's just quick, and so she gets into some of the gaps. Montana hitting the bottom of the backboard. Ooh, and then she tripped Williams, and it leads to a turnover. I just don't think they saw that. Byers getting the layup. Yeah, because she was in the right spot there. She was patient down there. It came right back into her, and she just started to dribble out and got tripped. Montana with the steal. Goes all the way for the layup. Just a bit short there as Hudson over half court. It was in her range, she thought there. That one was a very deep three attempt. I don't think by, by the looks on the coach's face, that was not necessarily the shot he wanted at that time. I you know, they started out that one possession. They, they passed, they moved, they got a great shot, and they scored. And then since then, they've kind of rushed a little bit again. Or Down low here, Cassiata scoring it. Brooklyn Center in some ways has defended decent except for against Ava. They've left her open inside quite a few times. Long jumper won't go there and Byers running it back the other way. She'll pull out of there and go back to Griffin. Inside for Cassiata again, trying to get that one back out and does. Quickly whip it around and layup good by Cassiata. Comes in averaging about seven per game. She's at 18 already, and we're very early in the second half. They're doing a nice job of seeing her. As soon as the ball goes baseline the last couple times, the defense has stepped out, and she's just stepped right down into that gap there, and it's been wide open for her. Confair shooting that long one up, no good. And then the outlet pass got away briefly, but recovered by Griffin. Oh yeah, there she went, right down. Inside again, this time no good, but a foul drawn. Cassiata will head to the free throw line. That was pretty, she just curled right around in there and was wide open. Yeah, you can see they've kind of figured some, some things out about how to attack that defense. Mm -hmm. And free throw no good. Ava was really, about the only one on either team that wasn't bitten by the uh, poor free throwing bug. Uh, but then she starts the second half with a miss. She was four for four on the first half. It's the second one to go. A little extra knee bend on that one and she scores it. So a 30 point lead now for Rockford. Confair lets it fly. That one's too strong. Rebound grabbed and they throw it up ahead. Layup is good for Byers. Confair is going to keep firing. That one no good. And Rockford able to control the rebound. Layup here a little too strong. 
Yeah, it comes back out. Rockford will get another crack at it as Griffin. Rockford just has to keep moving the ball like they were, getting the defense to shift. And then that curls wide open, or just like that, they came in and found the gap on the passing lane. Cassiata missed the first one. The defender trying to draw a charge. They didn't get the call, so that left her a relatively easy path to the rebound, and she scores. Confair, another long-range attempt. No good. Long pass ahead. And layup scored there by Byers. She has three buckets here early in the second half, and Coach Reese... Seeing enough, he'll take a timeout here with a 49-13 score. You know, I think Coach Reese wants to talk as far as, you know, they're taking some of those shots that are super long. They're not even close to the three-point line right now. They're getting some good looks, but they're not going back to the right shot again. The other thing is they're not getting back, getting beat up the floor a few times for easy layups, and that part you don't like to see. But I, I think his point probably with some of those shots is, you know, that's a shot you could really get at any time. Let's try and get something better first if it ultimately, you know, leads to that's the best you can do. But, the, I mean, those shots, a couple of them, like Confer, looks like she has pretty good form. But, I mean, even professional players, when you're that far behind the line, your percentage is going to go down. Right. And, you know, I'm assuming she has a pretty decent shot for them sometimes and is consistent, but I think they want her in a little closer. Like she was that, the one time she scored down there. They'd moved the ball well, and it was there, and it was an open shot. They, they also kind of quit trying to attack, and that was creating some more openings for them on the outside when they'd attack. Looks like it's going to be Brooklyn center ball now, so we'll see where we go. Again, Brooklyn Center, if you're just joining us, a little shorthanded tonight. They've got some players out of their lineup, and, and uh, you know, they've been off to a decent start this year. And as we said, you know, won, won some games last year. They, their schedule they'd lighten quite a bit. Again, just getting back into having a full, you know, varsity schedule last year after a couple of years of not, and just kind of trying to rebuild the program. And, oh, oh, there's a big-time collision as Williams is knocked down by Aaron's. She just bounces back up, you know. She's done that all night long, but she's she's fun to watch because she works very hard and she seems to be everywhere also. There you see just a much bigger player. Aaron's mm -hmm. knocking into her there. Didn't really mean to do it, obviously, but knocked her down. So Centaur basketball on the baseline. And pass deflected. It'll stay with Brooklyn Center. Confair shooting, no good. And they battle for the rebound. Have a foul call, looks like, against Rockford. That would be London picking it up. Yeah, that rebound came down. She came right on top of the Rockford player, and they just kind of rolled. Another long one heaved up by Hudson. I'm not sure what you'd say as a coach if you had your huddle to talk about it and then you still see 35 footers cast up for no reason. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a, a big point of contention at the time. We haven't even made them, so. Back out top here, Montana. And nice roll to the hoop and layup good. So Aaron gets her first basket. I always say the bad thing sometimes about those 35 footers is one goes in because then they think that's the shot they should be taking all the time. And Unfair launching, no good. Back across court here, Montana. Yeah. 
That one is short of the mark. Nice job coming up with it for Confair. And pass deflected though, and now Montana throwing it ahead. Layup try missed there by Sather. She was pressured, and the Centaur is trying to attack quickly the other way, but they turn it over. You know, right. So the Centaurs are looking for outside shots because it's hard to match up inside. But I, I really still believe if they took them a little more time and kept moving, going back to what Coach wanted to do in the beginning of passing and moving, they're going to get an outside shot that's a lot closer into what they've been taking. And, and we've seen that they can make those. On to the drive, dishing to Aarons, and she was fouled and will head to the free throw line. As Minter got up and bodied into her a little bit. So Sam Aarons will shoot. And no good on the free throw. Cassiata and Griffin coming back in here for Rockford. Second one no good and Cassiata rebounds it. That's another area obviously where Rockford with their size has had the better of things on the boards and the jumper is good by Cassiata. And a career night for her looks like a freshman rolling as 23 points. You know, it looked like she thought about take it, not taking that, and then, you know, she did like a little double pump and then went up and was on that. Williams on the run, too hard with that one. Montana directing traffic, gets it out to Griffin. She will shoot that three, and that one's not close. Montana knocked the outlet pass away, though, and Cassiata puts it in. Cross court with it. Confair will shoot it short. Off another rebound. You know, if you're Rockford on that right now, you just tell them, you, you know, keep yourself packed inside the three. Let them shoot it from out there. Because they're getting the rebound, then they're going down the other way. Cassiata, no good, but the putback is good by Ellie Sather. Her second basket has five points here, and it's 57 13 Rockets. You know what's nice about watching the Centaurs right now is obviously the score is not anything like they'd like it to be, but they're still competing. They're out there playing. They're competing on both ends of the floor. And to see some subs now coming in for both teams here. Hannah Stedman, number 21, will come in for Rockford along with Cassie Majeski, number 32. Centaurs will bring Lynch back in and also coming in is Chanel Klatt, number five, an eighth grader. To the baseline and dump down inside for Aaron's. And they're gonna call a three second violation before the shot attempt there on the Rockets. Oh, another big one, she made it. And this one will drop. So, Centaur is getting the hoop. Cross court and an open look there won't fall. Aaron's reaches out, taps it to herself, and scores it. On pair looking to go glass. She evidently has the green light from wherever she is on that one because she's she's looking to shoot every time she catches it. to the baseline. Stedman looking for Aaron. Score it plus a foul. Boy, nice use of the left there. Nice cut. They timed that one out perfectly. Oh, 
think a sub getting set to come in for the shooter, Aaron's, if she makes this one. Does not make it though, so the play stays going and out to the top, Stedman. Also in for Rockford now, Michaela Gronke, number four. Long jumper won't go for Stedman. Gets it underneath though to Aaron's, and the layup is good. I wasn't sure she really completely saw her. I thought she was just get, trying to recover the ball, and out of the corner right, she saw her because she nice little pass into her. Unfair, too hard off the window there. We got some more subs coming in for Rockford. And we get a timeout taken by Rockford before the shot attempt there as they get to uh, get their bench cleared a little bit here. We are into running time, by the way, uh, not in a timeout here, obviously, but 61-16 Rockets lead as you get another look at this one. A little bounce pass here with one hand. Aaron's was ready. You know, it's nice she had two people on her at the time. I think what coach for, for Rockford wanted, he wanted to pull, he's got all new players in it. I think he wants them to understand how he w wants them to run the ball right now and what he wants them to get done defensively. And we're seeing Brooklyn Center put in some more players too. Yeah, the Centaurs don't have, you know, as much of a bench tonight as what they normally would have had. So they'll, uh, you know, be a little bit limited in how deep they can actually go too. But Rockford, I think, will probably have seen the last of their starters. You'd ex certainly expect at this point. Uh, Victoria Nelson, number 23, is now in for Rockford. Yeah, I don't think we'd see his starters again tonight. Jaden Lark, number 25, also coming in. The other thing is it's gotten a little physical, too. You mm -hmm. want to escape with uh, no, no injuries down the stretch as well, besides this, you know, kind of... Pulling off here for respectful reasons, too. I agree. I mean, you definitely don't need an injury here. You've got these other players getting an opportunity to get some varsity playing time. Maybe, you know, wanting to work at that system and maybe get out some varsity jitters for themselves. Confair this time taking a two-pointer for one of the rare times, and she gets it to drop. She has seven points in the half, nine total. She's a little running... Uh, floated there. Inside and the layup is good as Majeski getting her name in the score column with that layup. So a nice little assist from Nelson on that. Long one no good there for Solani. Long two-point attempt, spins off. And Hudson leading the break back the other way now for BC. Hudson with the left-hand layup. That was a nice finish. And 65-20 our scores. We go under six minutes to play. Inside and a tie-up. It'll stay with Rockford. Look at that drive and finish by Hudson. That's a, that's a nice left-hand layup, and there's a little bit of traffic there, too. To the baseline, short on the jumper there was Lark. Solane coming the other way. That'll be an offensive foul. There was Stedman in there that took that charge. She got back there. I, I believe that was her. And she got that, beat her back there, got there, and stood her ground. Coaches love that, too. When you get back and play a good positional defense there, you're not reaching, you're just holding your ground. And even if you don't get the call, you, she still played it right. Exactly. And it's kind of tough to stand in there and take some of these charges when someone's flying at you like that. Jumper in and out. We'll have an over the back call going against uh, Rockford's Majeski. And we could see that one from our angle pretty good. She was just going after the ball, but definitely got some body contact there that affected the rebound. 
think that kind of works against us sometimes too. You're used to being that much taller than the people you're playing and then you, you know, you just reach and body control on it. Drive down the lane, the runner is short. Nice save by Klatt though. And almost a bucket for Confair and then we get a tie up. It will be Brooklyn center ball. Sierra Fisher, 25, was in there for Brooklyn Center briefly. I think believe that's her first appearance on tonight's varsity game. Back out top, Hudson, long launch, no good. And Rockets coming back the other way. Layup try won't go. And Hudson working her way out of there with it. Confair giving it up. And the three-pointer is good as Lynch getting her first basket. That extra pass really led to an open look. And now an answer at the other end. This is a two, but it's a, a bucket for Lark. We're starting to run a little bit more. We're getting some shots. And a little heat check there as the try won't fall for Lynch, but they'll get another opportunity. Hudson from the top, and that one is good for three. Oh, Centaurs trailing at 67-26 now. Cross-court pass, bounces around and out. And then they get it back out. Rockford will get another crack at it. They work it around quickly here. And we will get a tie-up. Hell ball goes to Rockford. Look back out, high arcer there for Hudson. She, that extra, you know, two to three feet in, she wasn't very far behind the line that time. Certainly makes a difference. And this one spins in and out, but the putback is good for Majeski. Yeah, I often wonder sometimes when the kids are stepping, but now she just went way back and the opposite. Result. I mean, she, she had room to get up into the range where she was successful. I often think, well, they'll wonder what kids are thinking when they're doing that. It's like, do they realize, or is that just, okay, I'm open and. Minute 40 to go in this one. Rockford in command, looking to win their fourth game of the season. And too hard off the backboard there. The rebound no good, but chased down by Lark. Yeah, she hustled after that, got her own rebound, brought it out. Down the lane and knocked away. It'll stay with Rockford. Sub coming in now is Gronke for the Rockets. I think if Majeski would have just turned and shot that, she could have done it. And that's a big habit of kids was they're, when they're getting used to play, they want to turn and put the ball down on the floor right away. That's too far for us to reach right now. <laughs> ball came over. Couldn't quite get it. I also do think if this wasn't a such a lopsided game, that probably would have been a foul call on the last drive too. I thought so too. Under a minute here, and Confer on her knees up with the steal. Williams will let it fly. That one is short. Solane back to it. Confair will work it around. Here is Hudson for a three. That's short. Comes right back to her, though. Ooh, and a big collision. Uh, it's going to be an offensive foul, it looks like. Let's hope that both players are all right. Boy, they really hit the ground hard. And I believe that's the fifth foul on Hudson. And considering how hard she hit the floor, it's probably just as well to... Sit down and take a breather here at the end of the game anyway. So it will be Rockford ball. And barring any further whistles, this should pretty much do it for our game here. We're under 15 seconds remaining. Try to get it inside. We had a foul on the pass, but that is, I believe, no, they did stop the clock again here. Thank you. 
Is that the sixth or seventh team foul here? Looks like it'll be a baseline inbound. No, it is going to be one and one. Yeah, they hadn't changed it up there. I was surprised they stopped the clock. Free throw, no good, and buzzer will sound before that last attempt, and Rockford will pick up the victory here on the road by a score of 69 to 26, as uh, they're showing why they've gotten off to a pretty solid start this season, and in Brooklyn Center, again, shifting with a different lineup than maybe what they would, you know, would optimally have, and may again have, you know, depending on the, how things go, uh, in the classroom for some of the, the parts, uh, members of their team. So 69-26, Rockford coming up with the win. Not always a pretty game, but definitely some good hustle, some good plays along the way, and, uh, and you know, the best of luck to these teams the rest of the year, too. Exactly, yeah, I thought it was a great game as far as, I, I really liked how the Brooklyn Center kids kept competing, you know? And like you said, they had some adversity they're, they're trying to work through, but good game and, and a lot of season left to play. Casiata with a great game with 25 points to lead the way for the Rockets and nine points for Confair for Brooklyn Center. We hope you've enjoyed this one. Our final again is Rockford 69, Brooklyn Center 26 for Patty Sorensen and all of our CCX crew, MJ Wilcox. Good night from Brooklyn Center.